Retinol is not safe during pregnancy, but how unsafe is it exactly? Well, hey guys, in today's video, we are going to talk about the safety of prescription and cosmetic retinols during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Pregnancy is a very challenging time. It can throw your skin in all different directions as a result of the hormonal and metabolic changes that are occurring to adapt to the growing fetus. It is not uncommon for women to develop different skin conditions during pregnancy, many of which resolve after delivery. About 85% percent of pregnant women will develop hyperpigmentation. Melasma, a skin condition of hyperpigmentation, is very common during pregnancy. It's even called the mask of pregnancy. And of course, we are all familiar with the fact that pregnant women, they develop stretch marks most commonly in the seventh and eighth months of pregnancy. During pregnancy, the activity of your sweat glands and your oil glands increases. A lot of women develop acne during pregnancy. And these conditions outside of pregnancy are are often treated effectively with a class of medications known as retinoids. Retinoids can be taken as pills by mouth that go into the body systemically, or they can just be applied locally to the skin and treat skin conditions at the site of action. When we're talking about retinoid pills that you take by mouth, you're probably familiar with 13 cis retinoic acid, AKA isotretinoin, AKA Accutane. This is a retinoid given by mouth to treat acne. And while it's very effective for many people for treating acne, it is not at all safe during pregnancy. It causes severe fetal malformations that are not compatible with life. So that's the pill that you take by mouth. But what about the stuff that you put on your skin? The one that we talk about a lot is all trans retinoic acid, AKA tretinoin, used not only for acne, but also for anti-aging effects, for hyperpigmentation. Tretinoin is actually used to treat a ton of stuff in dermatology. If if you look at the structure of tretinoin versus isotretinoin, they actually look kind of similar. They differ in just how the atoms are arranged in space. Um, they're isomers. It is assumed as a generally conservative measure that tretinoin is probably not the best thing to be using during pregnancy. What does the research actually show? Starting with animal studies, it actually can cause birth defects in animals when given orally. But remember, with tretinoin, we're not giving it to the patients by mouth, we're just putting it on the skin. But in animal models, like mice, for example, when given orally, it can cause birth defects similar to what would occur with taking isotretinoin or orally or Accutane. But what about putting it on the skin, which is relevant to how it's actually used? Animal studies actually do show fetal malformations when tretinoin is applied at very, very, very high doses to the skin, which again is not in keeping with how it is typically prescribed to people. But what about an actual pregnant woman applying tretinoin to the skin? What is the research there to underlie the concern, the caution? The absorption of tretinoin from the skin is actually pretty pretty low, generally speaking. About one to 2% of tretinoin is absorbed. Now, a lot of things can influence absorption of tretinoin into the skin. If you have an underlying skin condition, absorption might be a lot greater. You also have to factor in the body location. I pointed this out in several videos before, but certain body sites like under the arms are going to absorb ingredients a lot more readily than other body sites, like for example, the back. Certain skin conditions really do enhance absorption of things like tretinoin. And for example, somebody who has psoriasis, if they're applying a topical retinoid, the areas of their skin that are affected by the psoriasis are going to absorb that ingredient a lot more robustly. If you were to put tretinoin on dermatitis, for example, it might get somewhere along the lines of 31% absorption. So that definitely needs to be factored in. The site, the location, the nature of the skin. If you're using it in a limited quantity to the face for, say, acne, then it's not going to be as robustly absorbed as, say, you were putting it it under the arms to treat psoriasis. So location, sight, nature of the underlying skin condition, those are all factors that definitely matter. Knowing what we know about how low the systemic absorption is with tretinoin, what about the actual outcomes? Is there any evidence that women exposed to topical tretinoin during pregnancy, is there any evidence that they have adverse fetal outcomes? One would be most concerned about the risk for fetal harm with exposures 
early on in pregnancy during the first trimester. That is a really, really a much more high risk window of time. We do have some case reports from the 90s of fetal malformations in women who were exposed to topical tretinoin during pregnancy. These include malformations of the ear, the eyes, and the central nervous system. And that's notable because those are similar malformations to what occurs in women who, God forbid, would be on isotretinoin, aka Accutane, and would become pregnant. Those are the type of malformations. So it definitely raises some red flags, but association does not prove causation. Isolated case reports of women who were exposed to tretinoin and did have babies with these said abnormalities, it doesn't necessarily prove that the topical tretinoin was causative. It could have just been spontaneous. We do have some larger prospective studies. A prospective study is one in which the researchers identify a group of subjects and follow follow them for a defined period of time to figure out what happens. A prospective study of 291 pregnant women showed no difference in pregnancy outcomes in those who were exposed to tretinoin topically during pregnancy versus those who were not. Another prospective study looked at 94 subjects exposed to tretinoin and 113 subjects as controls who were not exposed to topical tretinoin during pregnancy. The study showed there were no differences in the rates of live births, miscarriages, or elective terminations. Then lastly, a prospective study looking at the risk of a variety of different malformations as well as pregnancy outcomes in women exposed to topical tretinoin. This sample of women was exposed to topical tretinoin in, during the first trimester. There were no differences in stillbirths. There was also no difference in the incidence of preterm delivery, nor were there any differences in pre and postnatal growth. So basically those who were exposed to topical tretinoin showed no differences in how the baby grew in the womb or how the baby grew after delivery. Now, while these studies are encouraging and they support the idea that it's unlikely to be harmful, um, there are some limitations. So the subjects are not being recruited early enough in the first trimester, so it's possible that they are missing some very early pregnancy loss um, in relation to exposure to topical tretinoin. And their sample sizes are such that they're only going to be able to detect really, really large differences in risk of these. So if it's a slightly increased risk of malformations, they're unlikely to detect that difference. While these large prospective studies are very encouraging to suggest that it's unlikely to be harmful. It does leave you questioning those prior case reports where there were fetal anomalies um, in women who had been exposed to topical tretinoin. What was that all about? It could have simply been the result of coincidence. It's also conceivable that some women or some fetuses are a lot more sensitive or absorb topical tretinoin more robustly, and that might explain it. It may be a true cause of those cases having fetal abnormalities. So by and large, when it comes to topical tretinoin, the consensus is to not recommend use of topical tretinoin, but it is thought that it's likely safe when used in a limited quantity, especially if the area being treated is not you know, very inflamed. Like I mentioned with dermatitis, you're gonna get a lot greater absorption. So on a case by case basis, topical tretinoin might actually be considered, but expert opinion is to be conservative and to not recommend the use of tretinoin during pregnancy. Now, of course, on a case-by-case -case basis, that may be reconsidered depending on what the patient is dealing with. Certain skin conditions, the benefits of tretinoin outweigh the risks and the unproven risks, if you will, of topical tretinoin in pregnancy, especially if we're talking later on in pregnancy when the risk of fetal malformations is not as high um, related to exposure, then it may actually be considered. But that's something that is going to come down to what is best for you based on you and what your doctor deems appropriate for you. It's not something that could be generalized to the public at large. That's tretinoin, but there are also other topical retinoids, which I have videos on, by the way, on this channel. What about adapalene? Adapalene is a retinoid that is is mostly used to treat acne, uh, but it can be beneficial for some other skin conditions. And in contrast to tretinoin, you can buy adapalene without a prescription. It's an over-the-counter medication, at least here in the United States. What about adapalene? Well, adapalene, in contrast to tretinoin, is absorbed 
when applied to the skin to an even lesser extent, um, almost very, very negligible. So the risk of absorption is, is even less. Uh, the risk of exposure is even less. In animal studies where they applied adapalene at very, very high doses, far exceeding what you would uh, presumably apply to the skin yourself, uh, there actually was no evidence of fetal malformations in, in animal models. And there are no human reports of fetal harm, fetal malformations, or adverse pregnancy outcomes in women exposed to topical adapalene. But it is a retinoid and, you know, it still gives us pause and by and large, it is not recommended during pregnancy. Although, you know, on a case by case basis in certain skin conditions, your doctor may deem that the benefits outweigh any theoretical risk. Then there is tazeratine. It goes by the brand name Tazerac. I have a vid videos on this drug um, about talking about it for acne and anti-aging. So check those out if you have been prescribed that and you're wondering, wondering about it. But tazeratine in contrast to tretinoin, it's absorbed a little bit more robustly. Up to 5% will be absorbed into the body. Now, tazeratine uh, as I've pointed out in other videos, not only is it an acne treatment, not only does it have evidence for anti-aging, but it's also useful for psoriasis. And psoriasis, as I mentioned earlier, is a condition where the skin is going to be absorbing to a greater extent. And tazeratine for psoriasis, it can be absorbed up to 35%. So there, the absorption is much, potentially much greater, depending, again, on the condition. Animal studies, not, again, not on humans, there are fetal malformations formations with tazeratine, Tazerac. However, in humans, the thing about Tazerac is that when it is absorbed in the body, it's highly protein bound. Uh, like 98% of it is bound up to proteins in your plasma. The likelihood of it crossing the placenta to the baby is very, very, very low. And there are numerous case reports of perfectly healthy infants delivered in the setting where mom was accidentally exposed to topical tazeratine. By and large, it's still uncertain as to the safety of topical retinoids during pregnancy. So while on a case-by-case -case basis, it may be actually recommended, depending again on if the benefits of the topical retinoid for a given skin condition that the pregnant patient may be experiencing outweigh theoretical risks to the baby. So those are the retinols that are considered medications. They're, they're medications that are FDA approved for the treatment of things. What about retinol or retinaldehyde? Those are cosmetic ingredients that you get in like your anti-aging serums. Retinol and retinaldehyde, these are cosmetic ingredients. They're not drugs. They're not medications. They're not intended for the treatment of any skin condition. They're cosmetic ingredients frequently pursued for improving potentially collagen, improving wrinkles, fine lines. Check out my videos going into detail on retinols. But in contrast to the medication forms, retinol and retinaldehyde in cosmetic products, your skin has to convert those ingredients to retinoic acid. So the absorption into the body is even lower. The likelihood of problems is even lower but we still operate on the theoretical risk that it may be potentially going to expose the baby to harmful amounts of retinoic acid in the, in the body, uh, although it seems very unlikely. So we still caution not to use these, but all that to say, there are no, there's no evidence of fetal harm from anyone using topical retinols. So the likelihood of harm to the baby is very, very low with using a cosmetic retinol or retinaldehyde, but we do still recommend not using those during pregnancy. What about with breastfeeding? Topical retinols, whether it be tretinoin, tazeratine, adapalene, cosmetic retinol, cosmetic retinaldehyde, these are not going to be excreted in the breast milk to any appreciable level to have any kind of impact on the baby, and they're considered safe during breastfeeding. All right, guys, so that's a summary on the safety data for retinol in pregnancy. Um, it's, not a it's not as clear cut as you might think, and that's honestly the case with the majority of of things in pregnancy, we have to rely on animal models. No one's gonna do a study testing if something causes fetal malformations. The best we can we can expect are these prospective studies that that look at women who were exposed and, and follow them to see what happens. And those, as I pointed out, they have their limitations. The take home point is that while we caution that these are not safe during pregnancy, the absorption is quite low and the likelihood of harm seems quite low. 
So if you have been exposed to a topical retinoid or retinol, you know, have a conversation with your treating healthcare provider. But the research that we have doesn't suggest any reason to go getting alarmed. It, it, the research that we have and experience that we have does not cause any concern. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this is We're just talking about retinol here, but when we look at the landscape of ingredients in skincare and cosmetic products, there aren't good like, there aren't like actual studies on the safety of these ingredients in, in things like lotions and creams. And there are just a ton of people out there who want to fear monger certain ingredients and claim that they're going to cause fetal abnormalities, endocrine problems. They take research from animal models using unrealistic concentrations of things and you know try and extrapolate that onto people when we actually don't have any evidence of harm to human health to babies fetal malformations or adverse pregnancy outcomes with you know, skincare products, personal care products out there. Um, so if you are pregnant or you know someone who is pregnant, let's not laser focus on, you know, cleaning up your skincare routine. I hate that kind of marketing. It's, a, you know, a crossover from the clean beauty stuff. They really prey on pregnant people because it's a very uncertain, scary time. We really don't have a lot of research to, to, to get overly worried when a woman is exposed to a skincare ingredient, something applied to the skin and pregnancy outcomes. It's, it's, it's something that the stuff that you're buying in the, in the drugstore for your skincare routine, you don't need to be worried about it. Um, retinol is not recommended during pregnancy. Prescription retinoids, medication, retinoids is a class of medications are not recommended during pregnancy. Retinol and cosmetics, retinaldehyde and cosmetics are not recommended in pregnancy. But if you are exposed to it, it's not like, it's not something that the medical community gets too concerned about because honestly, there's not really any evidence that we should be concerned about it. But to err on the side of caution, we continue to recommend not to use those during pregnancy. I hope that makes sense to you and you realize in watching this video that it's a bit more nuanced. Anyways, guys, on the end slate, I'm going to link a video all about acne skincare during pregnancy. So check that one out uh, if you are pregnant. Uh, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.